your real life D and I'm back at it again with another YouTube video for you guys. But before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. And if you're new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to follow me on my ads at Real Life Dia and the Money B Graphics. I do graphics, I make YouTube intros, outros, banners, all that. So just hit your girl up on the DM on the Instagram. And yeah. So as you guys can see from the title of this video. I'll be giving you guys some college freshman advice or freshman college, however you guys say it. I'm going to be giving some advice for freshmen who are attending college for the first time. <clears throat> now, I usually don't do these kind of videos, so it may or may not be as organized as you hope, but I'm trying. This paper has all the things I want to touch on and talk about as far as advice goes for freshmen. So the first topic is what to expect for the first few weeks of college, and this is more so like general advice or like I don't know yeah this is more like general advice so in the first section I have everything numbered so I'll be saying like number one number two number three etc etc so for number one for what to expect for the first few weeks of college is that usually the crowd the bookstores and stuff the bookstores and the university stores are usually crowded so usually everyone is trying to buy their materials and their books last minute because some people don't even get their um what's it called the list of what's the i forgot what it's called but some people usually don't get the list of what they need for class until the first week of school so a lot of people do be in there trying to get all that they need so if if i were you i would go ahead and try to get some of that stuff early on before school so you won't be stuck in a long line and waiting forever and stuff like that number two mostly everyone is going to be shy and quiet whether this is in the classroom, in your dorm, or in the Zoom classes. Now, I gave these specific ideas. I said these three specific ones because usually in the classroom, you know, everybody's quiet. It's usually silent. And maybe in your dorm, you and your roommates are not talking yet. Or in Zoom where a teacher asks a question and y'all, no one wants to turn their mic on and say something. Number three. You're not going to make friends right away, and that's okay. Usually it takes time to make friends. You have to get to know people. You have to see people, scope your surroundings, and all that. Number four is that you may get lost looking for class. Now, this is sometimes a given. Some campuses are really big, and some are really small. Some have maps all over the campus, or you can either go on your school's website and see if they have, like, a digital map or something. Or you can always just ask someone who's walking by if they know where the building you're going to is at. So yeah, like I said, that section right there was more so general advice, you general like what to expect when you, like the first few weeks of college. The second topic that I'm going to be touching on is classes slash workload slash professors. Now, <clears throat> number one, as an incoming freshman, your schedule may already be put together by your advisor. And usually those classes are like classes that freshmen have to take like mandatory classes that freshmen have to take and have to be put into before they can like do the other stuff, I guess. So by the second semester, you probably will be able to choose your classes. That's the way I had to go about it during my freshman year. When I first went there, my first semester was already like scheduled, planned out by my advisor. Then the second go round, well, second semester, I was able to make my own. Number two is that you do not have to do more than what you can handle. So as I mentioned before, like the advisor, you can always talk to your advisor about how like how the classes or you don't think you you know if you don't think you can handle it or you think there's too many issues or something not right then you can always talk to your advisor about it and maybe y'all can settle something out number three is that the workload is not too unbearable or it's not really hard in my opinion i feel like i kind of had an advantage because when i went to high school i already was in the ib program and i took honors classes i already took ap classes so i was already you know doing the critical thinking the hard work the long assignments stuff like that so when i came to college i was just like oh well this is just like senior year in high school for me so <clears throat> yeah but i guess it just depends like i honestly even if you didn't wasn't in the ivy program didn't take no honor classes or nothing like that and you were a regular student then college is not hard like it's not really it's not really much more than high school if you ask me Next thing on my list, which is number four, is the Rate My Professor app. Now, this app I want to recommend because I also touched on by the time you're, you're on your second semester, you're able to choose your own classes and your own professor. Now, this app right here, Rate My Professor, really helps you choose what professor you think is best for you because 
basically it's the students that are rating the professor so people may leave comments about like what they think or how the class was they rate the class itself and they rate like the teachers teaching methods and all that and usually they include whether the course is like hard or like easy going stuff like that number five on this list is that professors usually are understanding if something comes up so if like if you had like a bad headache or you call if you were sick or got a car accident or stayed up late stuff like that usually you could talk to a professor and set things straight and try to work around those issues and problems you're having in between doing your work teachers you know in high school teachers always say oh you can't turn it late where you can't do this you can't do that you can't do this you can't do that and college well when you get to college you can do all that so when your high school teachers tell you oh no late work some professors do take late work because college is more like real life. So if you have to turn in late work, then you just have to turn in late work. If you can't do it when it needs to be done, then that's just how it is. So usually you can work things out with your teacher and, you know, get that figured out. Number six on this list is that, oh wait, I also I forgot something. Well, I guess I can include in number six. So... Number six is that attendance is really, really important. Don't let people tell you that you don't have to like go to class in college. I mean, it may be the upperclassmen that are skipping class, but as a freshman, I recommend not skipping class because everything that's taught in class every day is valuable. It could be some hints to a test. It could be like, you know, just stuff that'll help you with, with your, it may be stuff that will help you with your work in the long run rather than missing class and being like, oh, I wasn't here that day, so I didn't know about it. That's not a good enough excuse. Cause you shouldn't have, shouldn't have skipped class so yes attendance is very and very 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 important i attended class every day the only times when i did not attend class is when i didn't have to um and also going on with number six i want you guys to take advantage of class group chats like if you're in a bio class maybe somebody made like a bio um a bio group chat go ahead and join that group chat you don't have to talk to your you don't have to text and talk to your uh, classmates but you know, they might come in clutch one day. I'll also take advantage of study groups, Quizlet, Socratic, and one-on-one -on -one tutoring, or find like a study buddy, because that really helps when you're like struggling in a class. Number seven is that syllabus are a must. So I I personally feel like syllabus are important. So I, when you get to college, I would actually read the syllabus because literally any question that you may have for your professor in the first few weeks of class, is literally in the syllabus so if you ask a question you don't want to you know be called out your teacher be like oh well it's in the syllabus did you read it you don't want to be that person so go ahead and read the syllabus or at least skim over it and make sure you you know know what's gonna be going on during the class and usually some professors they usually have syllabus quiz quizzes just to make sure like did the student actually read what I'm giving to them and you get like grades for that and that can also help you in the long run the next topic I want to discuss is social life. So I did mention number one earlier, making friends won't happen fast. Ways to make friends would be to start a combo with a classmate after class or something. Talk to your roommates, like get to know them a little bit or like invite your, you know, invite your roommates to the library to go study with you or go eat with you at a dining hall, stuff like that. Like that's way easy ways to make friends like the easiest way really to make friends in all case scenarios is just to talk to someone. Like that's literally how I make friends. I introduce myself and we start talking <laughs> and that's how it happens. Number two is that occasional partying is okay. Like depending on what campus you go to, there might be a lot of parties. There might be none. There might be very few, but you can always have a little fun here and there, but don't party every day. Don't party every weekend, stuff like that. Go ahead, get what you need to get done before you go party. And partying should not be a priority. That should not be a goal. So if you're going to go party, just be responsible about it. But as a freshman, I don't recommend going from party to party to party, party to party. Because it's not, it may be, it may be fun, but it's not really going to do much for you academically. Um, Number three is that, number three is about boys. So as far as boys go, don't make that your main priority. Don't go to college saying, oh, I want to like play with the boys. Oh my gosh, I want to get a boyfriend. No, that is not, that's not what you should be thinking about. 
your freshman year of college. A lot of people recommend not dating your freshman year, but yeah. <laughs> but if you meet, you may, you may or may not meet someone. And, you know, just don't talk to the seniors. Don't talk to the, you know, the upperclassmen. Sometimes the upperclassmen only want one thing. So just, just don't get caught up. And definitely don't become buddy. You know, but you already know the first or don't become buddies with them or don't try to be, oh, best friend, best friend. No, nah, it's a setup, honey. So don't do it. Continuing on social life, I also want to include that if you go find a boyfriend, don't expect it to be your lifetime husband or nothing like that. I mean, maybe if you're up class, like maybe you meet someone as junior or senior or you graduate with them and y'all still be together, stuff like that. But just don't make no boyfriend in freshman year and think, oh my God, it's like my husband, like we gonna graduate together and we gonna blah, blah, this, this, this. No, don't get delusional. <laughs> don't become delusional. The next topic I would like to touch on is mental health. So number one on mental health is that there are gonna be days where you feel overwhelmed or unmotivated and it's best to let it out. And I recommend venting to a friend because me personally, I did have a few breakdowns. I was crying in my dorm, in my room, over some schoolwork. So I did vent to a friend. I went ahead, well, I'm gonna go ahead and give him a shout out. I shout out to my friend, Will. I always vented to him, like long paragraphs about how I'm feeling about school, classes, grades, all that. Like, y'all, a girl was stressed <laughs> out during those times, but I overcame them and it was better the second semester. Now, the breakdown stuff, they all went on the first semester. Number two, some people get homesick. So if you're one of those people that think you'll be homesick, what you can do the first few weeks of school is just like talk to your, try to talk to your family often. If you have time, maybe in between classes or like when you're at the dorm. Um, or if you have a source of transportation, you can always go visit your family or make sure you able to attend, make, or make sure you're able to attend the, um, special occasions and stuff like that but don't miss school for just because like oh you're homesick because sometimes school is more important so sometimes it is family versus school and some people choose school some people choose family so it's up to you number three is that i want you guys to try to have minimal stressing stressing does not do you any good on your freshman year of college y'all like i'm really telling you like Stressing and having multiple breakdowns is just not good for you. Like, it's not good for your health. Like, it's just, <sighs> no. So, ways to, like, help you overcome it. Like, if you are having mental breakdowns and struggles and stuff like that, just, like, cope with doing some type of hobby. And like I said earlier, just vent. Like, vent to someone. Um. And number five on this list is that Working out really helps. So when I say workout, I'm talking about like exercising. Exercising really helps. And it is beneficial because, you know, you do have to walk a lot on campus. Well, at least on my campus, you have to walk a lot. And it won't hurt to walk to the gym, let off some steam. You know, if you are stressing or struggling, you can always go to the gym, take a little break and, you know, just start working out, relax the muscles, all that. <clears throat> Last but not least, um, the last topic I want to talk about is money and working. Now, I've heard that working while in college is hard. You'd be extremely busy and not have much time for any social life. Like from what I know, I haven't, I did not work my freshman year or in college. Period. I'm not. I don't plan on working a real job while in college because from what I've seen, people don't have time for anything else but work and school work and then school work in school like i don't want it to be like that for me so i'm not going to get a job while in college number two is that come to i would recommend coming to college with a few funds to last you the first few months now usually when you're a college student it is kind of hard to save but once you get into it that's when you're learning oops, that's when you're learning to save up a little bit like at the manage your spending and stuff so yeah that carries us into number three Number three is that spending your money wisely. You can't all you cannot always eat out. You cannot buy Starbucks every day. So I had to learn it the hard way because I actually was buying Starbucks almost every other day, and I ended up having overdraft on my account because of it. So <laughs> yeah, spend your money wisely. You do not want to be overdraft or nothing like that in your account because you know there's penalties and stuff for that. 
So just make sure you spend your money wisely and don't do too much with your money. Next on this list, number four, is that being broke in college is normal. If not everybody is on campus rich, like nobody is literally eating out every day, buying this, buying that every day while in college. It may look like some people are, but they probably ball on a budget, honey, and that's what you want to do, ball on a budget. And it's just, you can't spend all your money on, I don't know, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to tell you guys what to spend your money on, but just don't spend your money on things that you don't need. If it's not like a need or a necessity or an occasional outing, just don't, don't pay for it. And five on this list is that if you really, really, really do want to work while being in college, you could consider work study, but <clears throat> usually you have to be eligible for that. And on my campus, usually people could apply for uh, the dining halls and stuff because I guess some people be, they do. I'm not sure if the dining halls are like a part of work study or not, but some students do put in applications for dining halls and they get the job. And usually jobs on campus are very flexible with your um. So yeah, on the, end, on the end though, I just wanted to say that your freshman year is important. Some people say it's not that important. Some people just party, party, party their whole freshman year. They skip class. They literally do all the bad things that you're not supposed to do their freshman year. And that messes them up in the long run. Some people have to play catch up because you know they didn't do what they're supposed to do their first year of college. So I would just say, take your advice from the right people and just do your best in college. Overall, it's not hard. It's a lot of adjusting and a lot of learning and a lot of, um, dang, what's the word? Realization, stuff like that. So, yeah. That will conclude all the advice I have for you guys. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys, in hopefully you guys taken something from this and hopefully you learned. Hopefully I answered some of you guys' questions. Now, if you do have more questions about freshman year in college you can either direct message me on instagram at real idea or you can leave it in the comments down below and i'll maybe answer it down there or i may do a whole separate video going into detail about either of these topics it just has to be suggested to me so that will be all for today's video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and share the video and follow me on Portugal girls graphics business see you guys later